coming up on Cardinals Insider. I said, hey, can you take a picture of me in the, in the stands real quick? We follow Adam Wainwright on his old man walk. Also, join New York native Harrison Bader as he rides to the ballpark in the Big Apple. Well, I'll tell you this, New York is the reason why I play the outfield. And later on, there's nothing like a good curtain call. We look back at some all-time favorites. It's all ahead on a brand new Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. Last year, Adam Wainwright began taking what he calls old man walks the day after he pitches, which gives him the chance to explore ballparks across the league. This year has been more, because I had a couple of back things going on, a little spasmy early in the season, so I've been just leisurely walking, enjoying the time. And everywhere I go, everyone's like, hey, can we join you on your walk? And I'm like, no. And one of the great things about the day after pitching Old Man Walk is the escalator. And the young fella can't get away with that, but it's the Old Man Walk, so I can take an escalator whenever I want. It's like, who's that? <laughs> it's like some big tall guy's waving at me. Who in the world is that? But it's a time of just Total relaxation for me and, and just uh, exploration. I get out to see the, the new parts of the stadiums I've never been in. One seat. It's one, one seat in the row. Never seen it. You ever seen that before? Oh my God. That's not funny! <laughs> <laughs> trying to get me divorced. <laughs> here in, in Chicago. I've kind of explored a lot of the different areas, even went in a couple of the bathrooms, which are not that great. And I had probably my funniest walk here. I went out into the bleachers and the Cubs pitchers were out there warming up and, and uh, I was the only one in the whole crowd. There was nobody here yet. It was like 11 in the morning. The stands weren't open yet. The fans hadn't come in. And I was wearing my Cardinals red shirt and Cardinals shorts. And I, there was a pitcher on the field, young guy. I said, hey, can you take a picture of me in the, in the stands real quick? And he said, uh, no, I can't, I can't take a picture with you. And I was like, no, I don't want you to take a picture with me. I just want you to, I'm going to throw you my phone. You take a picture of me in the stand. He said, no, I can't, can't do that, buddy. And he, threw, and he throws me a ball. So now I have a ball that he gave me because he's, I think he thinks I'm, a, you know, just a fan. And I said, I appreciate the ball, buddy. Um, and his bullpen catcher was dying laughing. His bullpen catcher knew who I was. I said, hey, uh, my name's Adam. I pitched for the Cardinals for the last 16 years. Can you please take a picture of me right now in the stands with my phone if I throw it to you? And he was like, crap, yes. Yes, I can take a picture of you. I said, I appreciate it. I flipped him the phone. He takes a picture of me, throws the phone back. And I said, thanks for the ball. And he was like, ah. Harrison Bader is a born and raised New Yorker, so going back to the Big Apple is always special. He invited our cameras along earlier this season when the Cardinals visited the Mets. Thank you. Good. How you doing? How you guys doing? I gotta get going, guys. I'm sorry. Thank you. Harrison. What's up guys, this is Harrison Bader with Cardinals Insider and we are in my hometown of New York City and we are on our way to City Field right now. Gonna fly ball center field, here comes Bader on the run, he dives, he makes the catch. I'll tell you this, New York is the reason why I play the outfield and that's because the, uh, the fields were never really kept well. You know, there were rocks everywhere, dirt patches, the grass was terrible. <laughs> So, you know, I learned very quickly that, you know, my, my game was not feeling a ground ball really cleanly. Um, always jamming my finger, you know, splitting a nail, taking it off, you know, a, you know the cheek or something. Or, um, so, I, again, like I said, I learned very quickly um, that I was an outfielder because, as we know, there are no bad hops in the, out, in the, uh, in the air. So, 
<laughs> in addition to that, it also made me, you know, a little bit more tough on the field. You know, the batter's boxes, everybody was a righty. No one's really a lefty. The batter's boxes were super dug in, so you'd kind of step into, you know, the box on the right side at these, like, public fields, and, you know, your ankles are, like, below home plate. I remember, I'd look over at the left-handed batter's box, and I'd kind of say to myself, you know, that's like a pristine batter's box over there. Like, why am I not a lefty? Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it just adds to the character. So growing up, I think I just understood fashion to just be like a, a, like a way of communication, honestly. You know, as I kind of grew up, I, I put more emphasis in like, um, like smaller designers, just kind of reeling it all in and just understanding that like, fashion isn't always about, um, you know, having the most money and, and buying as much as you possibly can just to have it sitting in your closet to never really enjoy. You know, having the ability to, to come in contact with people from different walks of life. You know, I'm surrounded by baseball obviously nonstop and, and my teammates, we all spend so much time together, but to have an outlet, um, especially a creative one for me, is uh, it's been a lot of fun. So it's definitely created a lot of balance. There's an outfit that I wore in Chicago. I was wearing these like brown boots with these like, they were like velour blue pants. And then there was this like red paisley Gucci shirt that just, I mean, the entire ensemble looked absolutely terrible. I think it's it's fun sometimes to see the growth that I've experienced, whether, whether it be related to fashion or baseball, whatever it is, I, I like looking back and, and enjoying the, uh, the kind of little journey. But uh, yeah, I've come a long way since that outfit, so. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Wick. Yeah, I'll see you next time. All right, Good night. brother. Thank you. After the break... Boys, if you don't throw strikes, there's something wrong with you. Two of my 80s teammates visit the insider desk to discuss the 1982 season. Stay with us. John Stuper and Dave LaPointe were my teammates on the 1982 World Championship team. The two joined our Emily Stevens recently to talk about the 82 club ahead of our 40th anniversary reunion. Welcome to Cardinals Insider at the Ballpark. I'm Emily Stevens and joining me today is 1982 World Series champions Dave LaPointe and John Stuper. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's hard to believe it's been 40 years since the 1982 World Series. Can you guys believe it? Well, and you're going to ask us questions, so it's harder to remember those stories. <laughs> now, now you guys are both pitchers. So what was it like just to have such a stellar defense behind you guys? I mean, we could name pretty much the entire team. Well, you, you felt foolish if you walked someone. Let's, let's put it that way. I mean, we really relied on pitching and defense. We didn't have an overpowering staff, but we didn't walk very many people. And when you have arguably the greatest defensive infield in the history of the game, um, in my opinion, the best first baseman ever, and in my opinion, the best shortstop, the best defender ever. I mean, you got to throw strikes, and uh, and that's why you know we were in most games. And John, for you, your story is amazing. Game six, you know, two rain delays, and you pitched a complete game. Walk me through just what that experience was like as a rookie. Well, um, you know. I, I was more, never more nervous in my life than I was for that start because we were down three games to two and I felt like I had you know, the weight of the world on my shoulders, but um, guys just started scoring runs like crazy. But between the sixth and the seventh, it was two hours, I think two hours and 19 minutes. I was really sore um, warming up between that, but uh, my biggest goal that night was to give the bullpen the night off if I could for game seven, and I was able to do that. 13 runs certainly helped. Um, but uh, I was really happy to be able to give the bullpen the night off. You can't talk about 1982 without Whitey and Whitey Ball. I mean, it's just a style of play that you just don't see anymore. Well, he, you know, and he let you know what he was thinking, and that, that's what made it easier to play for him. Like, we're talking about the best defense, he, in spring training, he said, boys, if you don't throw strikes, there's something wrong with you. He'd say, if, if you can't get down a sacrifice bunt, you're never going to be a starting pitcher for me. And these little things that he let you know exactly what he wanted out of you sure made it a lot easier to play for him. And we have the reunion coming up on August 13th. What are you guys most looking forward to for that? You know, it would probably be like when we were rookies, we'll get in the back of the bus and just keep our mouth shut and just let the big boys do all the talking. So it, 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 
through the fantasy camps, we get to see a lot of them, you know, a lot of the time anyways, but I haven't seen uh, uh, Keith in a long time, and, and so it'll be nice to, to touch base again. I, I couldn't agree more. I'm going to feel like a rookie again. Um, you know, I just got done coaching for 30 years at the college level, and being the boss, and I'm going to be anything but the boss at this reunion. And I'll just, I'll just sit there and take it. Um, and I, I'm look, I couldn't look forward to it more. We, we could probably, if you put the bus outside, we'd probably go out and get in the same seats <laughs> and be in the same conversation we were at the end of 1982. That we were a closely knit bunch and, uh, and 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 basically liked each other. That's not easy to get on a team these days. The memories from that year. Um, I mean, my probably my two fondest memories are going to be Glenn Brummer stealing home which was just unbelievable, and it's in St. Louis lore now. Um, and people always ask me what my favorite moment from the World Series is, and they assume that it's going to be the game I pitch, but it's not. It's going to be, it's Bruce's last pitch to Gorman Thomas, and we're world champions. So um, we had, you know, guys, we acted like rookies, and we had a lot of mentors on our team, like Bob Force, Bruce Suter, Jim Cott, Doug Bear. I could go on and on. Um, Willie had Ozzie. Um, I mean, that was the kind of team we were. Um, and, you know, like we said, we just said, sitting at the back of the bus or whatever, I mean, we're going we're gonna to feel like rookies again. There's no question about it. There's an old saying in baseball of teams that don't win, 25 players, 25 cabs. Um, our team was nothing like that. We'd hang around after the game and talk baseball and maybe have a beverage or two. Um, and that, that's one of the great things was about this, about this team. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for your time. Again, the 1982 World Series reunion is going to be August 13th, so be sure and look for these guys around the ballpark. It's going to be a weekend full of fun. That's all for here at the Insider Desk. Still to come, Brendan Ryan was always a fan favorite. Here's some great stories from his visit with the Cardinals Insider Podcast. That's in just a bit, so don't go anywhere. Brendan Ryan is the guest on this month's Cardinal Insider Podcast. His defense and personality made him a fan favorite during his four seasons here in St. Louis. Here's a sample of what you'll hear on the July edition of the show. Our guest today, along with Larry Stade and Joe Pfeiffer, I'm Brett McMillan, is Brendan Ryan. Just on time is kind of uh, what Brendan is known for, there walking in <laughs> right there. Not late. Nope. Not early. No. There's no, no reason to be early. Right. Always want to be on time in baseball, but don't have to be early, right? Like that big entrance, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on the money, and he gives it like an aha. Yeah. Like we all should like... I'm not late. Applause. We should How applause you? when yeah. you arrive on time. Yeah. That's your expectation. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. I always find this topic really interesting of like baseball IQ, mm -hmm. because it seems like some of it can be learned. Matheny used to say, caught, not taught. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it can mm -hmm. be some of it can be caught but it seemed, or taught rather, but a lot of it maybe, um, I don't know, it's just intuition. Is that fair? Some of, yeah. some of us might have it and some of us might not. <laughs> well, it's interesting what you pick up from the different guys. You know, you, you might pick up one little thing, but it's a specific, you know, time in the pitcher on deck or whatever it may be. But then someone might also teach you a different way to think. And that's going to encompass a whole slew of things i mean that like, that's the stuff that might change your career you know and when you see guys studying the video and they're not even watching for hitting i was talking we were talking about curtis granderson earlier mm -hmm. and watching him study the video and he's not even he's just studying for base running you know so i think it's like a lot of it's hunger a lot of it is just sort of being wired a certain way where you can just it, the brain never turns off you know and and i think a rod was that way but i don't think He's unique to that. And a lot of the guys that have that crazy success, they go home, they take those at bats home, as, as we're told not to. <laughs> but you're running through it. You're playing all the at bats backwards, and and you know, like a, a walk does does not mean a good at bat. Like a 14 pitch walk, right? I mean, like how many pitches did you get to hit in those 14 pitches, right? So there should be maybe some regret in that at bat, even though you ended up walking. Your teammates at fantasy camp, they're kind of razzing you about yeah. that, yeah. about some other things. And they were <laughs> saying... Kyle McClellan and Jason Mott. And Jason Mott. Speaking right. of the names. And, right. Uh, <laughs> right. And one of them said, that, well, they were both saying, it shows you how good he was because with all that other stuff, right. he might not have been here if he wasn't that good. <laughs> oh. But with Ozzy sitting there, and it just didn't disrespect Ozzy at all, 
they said, if not for the fact that Ozzie Smith had played for the Cardinals, we might be looking at the best defensive shortstop in Cardinals history. Wow. And it was your teammates that said that about you. Oh, that, again, when your peers are saying something like, you know, something complimentary in general, it it just, I mean, it holds a lot more weight. You know, I mean, those, those are the guys that, you know, have done it. They've been in your shoes. And, and when they're singing your praises and especially something as humbling as what you're sharing, I mean, that, you know, that, that means a lot. If you enjoyed that conversation, be sure to check out the full-length version. Watch on YouTube or listen anywhere you get your podcast. And you can always hear the latest episodes of the Insider Podcast and Kyle McClellan's Chatterbox at cardinals.com slash podcast. But for now, stay with us. We're back after the break. Dan McLaughlin has been a fixture in the Cardinals TV booth for many years. You're used to having him in your living room. But Dan is also quite active in the community. That includes his ticket program titled Danny's Magnificent Kids. Yeah, I actually started a ticket program many, many, many years ago at the old ballpark. And then I re-upped it going into probably 2018, 2019. So the, the, the pandemic hit, we couldn't get people down to the ballpark, but now that we're allowed to go back on the field, uh, re-upped it and away we go. With the platform that we have of doing Cardinal Baseball and how many people in our community love coming to the ballpark, I thought it was a perfect fit. I wanted to do something for kids, whether they were underprivileged or we have uh, kids that need uh, a night out or maybe parents that need a night out from their kids. So it was a, a good way to do it, have a little fun and get some people down to the ballpark that maybe normally wouldn't have the chance to do it. I think the thing that stands out the most is that the kids are so appreciative and the parents are so appreciative too. And again, we have all kinds of different kids under different circumstances that come to the ballpark. To see their eyes light up if they go into a dugout or go onto the field, or see a player come over and say hello, take a picture, sign an autograph, that's as good as it gets. So coming to a game is pretty cool, but having the extra added bonus of doing those kind of things, that's pretty neat. Yadier Molina is now the all-time leader in putouts by a catcher. He achieved the mark during game one of a doubleheader on June 14th, passing Pudge Rodriguez by recording his 14,865th putout. It's popped up, Yachty, with the catch. Put out number 14,865 for Yadier Molina. And with that, he is the all-time leader in putouts in the history of Major League Baseball. Just past Pudge Rodriguez, 14,865, the most in the history of Major League Baseball. When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Bo in San Antonio, Texas asked, what was your favorite year with the Cardinals? Well, Bo, I, I would have to say, you know, winning the World Series in 1982 was very, very special. But 1985 was a special year, 85 and 87. And I say that because it was in those two years that for me, uh, I became much more than just a defensive player. I think my team looked to me for more offense and I was able to contribute a lot more. The rounding out of Ozzie Smith started coming together in 1985 and then 1987, I put it all together, which was my best year offensively. I think I hit 303 that year and actually got to hit third in the lineup at some point in time. So I think 85 and 87 were my favorites. Winning the World Series was, was very special too and that was my first year here. Thanks for the question, Bo. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, stay with us. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. There's nothing quite like a game-changing home run. And baseball is the only sport that calls a player to come out and take a bow. 
We call it a curtain call. And the Cardinals have had some great ones over the years. Deep left at the wall. Welcome to St. Louis, Nolan. An opening day home run. Nolan Arenado. And Gale out to deep right field. Has a chance to leave the ballpark. It's gone. Molina, deep left, Grand Slamma! The rally cat, out to deep right, yes, 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 he did it! In what could be his final plate appearance in St. Louis! Smith, Cork one in the right, down the line, it may go! Go crazy, folks, go crazy! He hits it the opposite way to deep right, and back! Kiss it goodbye! And there is a new Major League record. Albert hits it a ton out to deep left. He gave us 11 years of memories we'll never forget. He's just given us another. In the air. Out to deep left. It is gone! Welcome back, Albert! It's like you never left! That's all for this episode. Join us again right here next week. And as always, you can watch new episodes on YouTube or cardinals.com slash insider. For everyone involved with the show, I'm Ozzie Smith, and we'll see you here next time.